Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stock Unlock video. In today's video, we are going to be going over the cash flow statement, which is the third and final financial statement that companies and businesses put out on a quarterly and annual basis um, to the public and to their investors to let them know essentially how the cash is flowing in and around the business. The cash flow statement, in my opinion, is the most difficult but also the most important financial statement that companies release to the public. And once again, this is simply because the cash flow statement shows investors how cash is moving around within the business and also how cash is entering the business as well as leaving it. Also, as I said in our income statement video, the income statement shows us the net income or the earnings of the business, but as I pointed out, the earnings of the business doesn't always show you the true profit potential and the true profitability of that business. But on the cash flow statement, I believe that it, it better shows investors how much cash and how much profits the business is actually producing. So with that being said, let's just hop directly into the video. And as always, let's take a look at Google's cash flow statement. And the first thing that we need to point out is that the cash flow statement has three different main segments. And these are the cash from operating activities, the cash from investing activities, and the cash from financing activities. Now, the first one is the cash from operating activities. This is also known as the operating cash flow. And essentially what this is, is it shows investors how much cash the operations of the business are producing. It essentially takes out all of the non-cash items like depreciation and amortization, stock-based compensation, and all of these other non-cash figures that are applied to net income. And it shows investors, once again, how much cash the operations are actually producing. The cash from investing activities is how much cash the business is investing back into itself or investing into things like acquisitions and buying literal stock in the market. Typically, the cash from investing activities is negative because the business spends money to invest in itself, which again, usually results in the cash from investing activities being a negative figure. Finally, the cash from financing activities shows investors how much debt the company is taking on, if the company is doing dilution, um, if the company is paying a dividend, and if the company is buying back shares. This is typically a negative number as well. And if this number is positive, then it means that the company is taking on a debt or doing dilution or essentially raising money in some sort of debt or dilution way. So again, typically this one is negative as well. So let's break down the cash from operating activities right here. And we can see that the cash flow statement always starts out with the net income. This is because on the cash flow statement, it, it essentially takes the net income that was reported on the income statement and then adds back all of the non-cash figures and, and shows investors better how much cash is actually flowing around and how much cash the operations are actually producing. So for example, right here we can see that Google produced about $74.5 million of cash from, or sorry, $74.5 million of net income in the trailing 12 months in the first quarter of 2022. Then we can see that the cash flow statement then adds back on $13.5 billion of depreciation and amortization because this is removed from the income statement, but it is a non-cash expense to the business. So the cash flow statement adds it back in. And then we have deferred income taxes and other items here that are added back to the cash from operating activities. And ultimately we can see that the cash from operating activities that Google has produced in the trailing 12 months is about $97.5 billion which is about $20 billion more than the net income, which ultimately tells us that the cash that Google's operations are producing is actually higher than the net income figure that it reported. So the cash the business is producing is actually, or, or the profits that the operations produce is actually higher. If we move on to the cash from investing activities, there is one incredibly important number in here. And this is the investments in property, plant, and equipment, because this is also known as the capital expenditures for the business. This is how much money the company is spending on investing back into itself and also just maintaining the overall business. This is kind of seen as like the company's necessary investments into itself to keep the business running. And it's actually the number that is subtracted from the cash from operating activities to find the business's free cash flow. Now, again, this is the area of the cash flow statement 
where the company is investing back into itself. So if you're thinking about finding the true profitability of a business, you may have to think and ask yourself, well, like how much cash is this business investing back into itself versus how much cash is needed just to sustain itself? And unfortunately, we don't really know what that answer is. I personally wish that companies would report sustaining capital expenditures, which would show investors how much money the business is spending just to sustain itself versus how much money the business is investing into growth. But unfortunately, both of these numbers are put together here, and this is the capex for the business, the investments in property, plant, and equipment. The final segment here is the cash from financing activities. And we can see that the debt repayments for Google were a negative $1.2 billion figure in the trailing 12 months. What this means is that Google is a net um, payer of debt or they're not taking on debt and instead they have been they have been removing debt they have been spending money to remove debt now if this number was positive like it was here in the second quarter of 2021 then what that would suggest is that google has been taking on debt so if the number is positive then it means that debt is flowing into the business and if the number is negative then it means that debt is flowing out of the business and google is you know essentially spending money to remove debt the next major thing here is the net common stock issued and this is also known as dilution and what we can see here is that google spent 52.1 billion dollars on net common stock issued now if this number is negative then what does that mean it means that money is flowing out of the business and the company is actually buying back shares. They're spending money and money is outflowing to buy back shares. If this number was positive, what that would mean is money is flowing in it to Google or in it to the business through issuing shares or essentially dilution. So again, if you see this number being positive, it means the company is doing dilution. And if the number is negative, it means that the company is buying back shares. And that is why we can see that Google has a net cash from financing activities of negative 64 billion. Lastly, once again, what we can see here is the free cash flow for the business. And this is how much real cold hard cash the business produced in, in, in the given amount of time that you're taking a look at. This is quite literally how much cash the business has produced. And again, we can see that it is calculated by taking the cash from operating activities and then subtracting the investments in property, plant and equipment or the capital expenditures. And then we get the free cash flow. Typically what you want to see as an investor is the cash from operating activities increasing over time. And if we zoom out on Google, we can see that the operations are continuing to produce more and more cash flow over time. I mean, over the past 20 years, Google has been able to consistently increase the amount of cash that its operations generate. And what this ultimately means is that Google is able to continue growing the business and returning more cash back to its shareholders. Now, the next thing that investors typically want to see is the free cash flow growing over time as well. And in Google's case, this is exactly what we are seeing here. Google's free cash flow is growing over time, which means that it is able to return more cash to its shareholders in the form of, you know, investing back into the business or repurchasing shares, which Google is now doing. So let's now head over to BYND or Beyond Meat, and let's take a look at Beyond Meat's cash flow statement, because this is a perfect example of what you do not want to see. Right here, we can see that Beyond Meat's cash from operating activities is negative 436 million in the trailing 12 months, and the company's cash from operating activities is continuing to decline. What that means is that over time, this business is becoming more unprofitable and its operations are losing more and more money. This is not a very good trend to see. As an investor, you really got to ask yourself, like, how is this business staying in business? How are they continuing to keep the lights on if the operations are literally losing hundreds of millions of dollars? And the cash flow statement will answer that question for us. Once again, the cash from operating activities for Beyond Meat or BYND is negative. And what we can see right here is the cash from financing activities is positive. What that ultimately tells us is Beyond Meat is losing money on its operations. So how the business is funding itself and where the money is entering the business is through financing activities. And we can see that it was through debt repayments and the debt repayments are a positive $1 billion figure, which ultimately tells me that Beyond Meat raised over $1 billion of debt they took on, you know, a billion dollars of debt. They got debt and uh, that's how cash came into the business. And that is how the business is affording to, well, keep the lights on because the operations are not, you know, the operations are not keeping the light on. We can also see that in the trailing 12 months, 
Beyond Meat has done $90 million of dilution. Beyond Meat is keeping its lights on and it's staying in business through taking on more debt and through doing more dilution. It's not staying in business organically at all, and this is typically not what you want to see. Now also, if we take a look at Beyond Meat's free cash flow, it is also declining over time. And in the trailing 12 months, it is negative $570 million. This ultimately just tells us once again that Beyond Meat's business is losing money, and typically this is not what investors like to see. Personally, I do not like businesses that have negative free cash flow and negative cash from operations because once again it just means that the business has to raise debt or do dilution to stay in business which typically leverages up the balance sheet or destroys shareholder value through dilution so those are some of the key things that i personally take a look for on the cash flow statement and those are some of the key things that i you know point out and some of the things that I think are red flags personally. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that this video could help explain the cash flow statement. And if you enjoyed the video, then please remember to leave a like on it. I really appreciate it. And it really helps us grow our channel here. And by the way, if you do not know what any of these figures here on the cash flow statement mean, then you can simply turn on education mode. And then every single question mark here on stock on a lock is clickable and then you can click on them and we will explain to you what that metric is how you can use it and sometimes we'll even give you tips on how you can better use all of this information but that's going to wrap up the cash flow statement analysis and video so again please leave a like on it if you enjoyed and if you want to stick around and see more content then please consider subscribing to our channel also, if you want a seven day free trial to Stock on a Lock, then there will be a link in the description or you can head over to stockonalock.com, enter in your email and you can get a seven day free trial to our platform um, totally free. So yeah, that's going to wrap up the video, everyone. Thank you again so much for watching. I truly do appreciate it. And I really hope to see you all again in our next video.